Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to pressure test an air conditioner. So we have our bottle of nitrogen here, we've got our regulator, and we have our gauge set. So you know, I've already pulled out the valve cores out of the service valves while brazing. I was flowing nitrogen through. So these are out of these ports right here. So our red hose right here, that gets connected to our liquid line, and there is no Schrader valve in here. It's also uh, known as a valve core. So we have our red hose connected to our liquid line, and we have our blue hose connected to our suction line. Uh, both are snug up, no valve cores in place. The gauge set is closed. Presently, this handle is closed, and what we need to do is just make sure that this regulator thumb screw is backed out before we turn this on. Our yellow service hose is attached from here right over to our gauge set. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn the tank on and you see that the tank has about 1800 PSI and that is indicated by the red line right there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this thumb screw in and as we turn the thumb screw in our secondary gauge right there which will be our output uh, going to our manifold gauge set that pressure is going to go up. And the pressure is read on the red inner line in PSIG. This unit right here has a max design pressure of 700 PSI. The evaporator coil though inside the house that ends up saying 450 PSI. So it says max design typically or uh, max pressure and so basically that's as much as you could possibly pressure test this system to. The indoor coil typically has a lower max design pressure and so that's really what you want to check on it in reference to uh, making sure that you don't over pressurize the system. Because what could happen, especially when you're working on existing systems uh, that work with lower pressure refrigerants, you could end up causing a leak if you are pressure testing too high. If the indoor evaporator coil does not have a max design pressure on the rating plate, or the rating plate is wore off, or the rating plate is gone, if it's an older R22 coil, I would not pressurize it any higher than 150 PSIG. I have seen R22 evaporator coil rating plates as low as 150 PSIG max design pressure. Some of those old evaporator coils were made for AC only and some were made for heat pumps. The ones that were made for heat pumps have higher max design pressures. So nowadays all evaporator coils typically have higher max design pressures. Number one, because heat pumps can be installed. Number two, uh, is because of the higher pressure R410A refrigerant. So on this one we're going to go ahead and pressure test it up to about 350. We could pressurize it up to 450 if we really wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm, after this I'm going to do a standing vacuum test. Uh, and that's done with a vacuum pump. So I'm going to run the vacuum down to about two, 300 microns and I'm going to let it sit and make sure that it doesn't rise. That's a secondary indication that there is no leaks in the system. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this thumb screw in. So basically we need to get that up higher. It's at 275 right now. We're going to go ahead and turn it until it gets up to about 350. And we can go ahead and open up both of our handles here. I like to let pressure in to both sides at the same time so the pressure ha doesn't have to get forced through the thermostatic expansion valve. So you see this gauge right here actually has a max pressure of right, of, right about 350. So I don't want to go above that because what would happen is I wouldn't be able to tell if there is a leak because I wouldn't be able to see if this dial ends up going down or not. So presently, it looks like we have 345 PSIG on this side, and we have a little over 350 PSIG on this side. So right now, they're actually equalizing. This high side pressure is actually going down, and the nitrogen is equalizing on both sides. So right now, we have 345 PSIG on both sides. Sometimes I like to just tap them, make sure that they're not hanging up or anything like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes, just to make sure that the pressure doesn't go down. During that 10 minutes, what I like to do is I typically will go and bubble leak back the joints. Sometimes it's nice to go ahead and pressure test at only 50 PSIG first, just to make sure that you didn't uh, make any mistakes, like not tightening a flare or, or a Teflon ring or something like that. Uh, so it may be good to just pressurize to 50 PSIG first, so you're not wasting nitrogen in case you miss something. But after that, that's when you can go ahead and pressurize it to a pressure below your max design pressure on your low side of the system. During the pressure test, you can basically just leave this alone as long as you make sure that this handle and this handle is, is shut nice and tight. If you're going to leak check with your bubble leak detector, you could use like this as a rector seal. 
I actually have this link down in the description below, uh, but it has a dabber right here that you can go ahead and put on all your joints. This is able to find leaks pretty well. It, it bubbles very, very good. I don't see any bubbles, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe that bubble leak detector off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut my nitrogen tank down, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this clockwise. So that's shut. The nitrogen pressure between right here on this port of the hose and right here, uh, we can just go ahead and release that. Now we're gonna disconnect this right here, and you'll see the pressure right here and right here fall, and as long as your handles are shut, you'll still maintain your pressure test. So that's what we're gonna do next. If you saw any of that, that was just a little bit of refrigerant oil that's actually in this hose right here. After that, you just want to go ahead and back this thumb screw out so that it's ready for the next use. Don't back it out all the way, otherwise the thumb screw is going to end up falling out. We can go ahead and disconnect here. Now that we're done our pressure test and it's holding, we're going to release the nitrogen out of our service hose. Now that it's getting close to zero, what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect here and here and we're going to get ready for our vacuum pump. I don't like to have my manifold gauge set attached when doing a vacuum, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect that from the system. I just like to have my two valve core removal tools, my two hoses going over to my vacuum pump, and I'm able to vacuum down very, very quickly. I keep my micron gauge close to the service valves, and I'm able to get a very deep vacuum down to say two, three hundred microns, and I'm able to hold that for ten minutes. I'm going to put these right back onto the back of my gauge set just to make sure that they don't end up falling in the dirt. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash AC If you're looking for the tools used in this video and the same tools that I use out in the field, check out the description and comment section below. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.